And this is something to take to heart everybody. Because when you get involved in sin, you're naturally going to want to cover it up. But you know what the biggest problem is? Is when you continue in that sin and then continue to judge. See, when I after I got saved, I knew getting drunk was a sin. There was a lot of things I didn't really know. I mean, in the Bible... I didn't like get in church and, and, and really start learning and growing. But there's some things that I knew just weren't right. I knew committing fornication wasn't right. I knew getting drunk was a sin. That, those are pretty obvious things. You almost don't even need to read the Bible at all to understand those things. But when I was guilty of those things, you know what I didn't do? I didn't go around telling other people not to do those things. I mean, even just the conviction of being a hypocrite. And then the audacity to overcome that built-in mechanism of God that ought to humble you and just go beyond and continue doing things is beyond me. And the Bible gives very serious warnings about this. And the Bible says, you know what? Thou art inexcusable. There is no excuse and I'll tell you this right now, because I've, I've seen a lot of different things and thoughts and opinions. Now is not the time for restoration. Now is not the time to be going, oh, well, what, you know, I, I've taught on this. I've preached on this before. We've read through 1 Corinthians 5. I believe we'll be going there uh, later on in the sermon. But the point is, you know, 1 Corinthians 5 outlines who we're not even supposed to eat with. Okay, and adulterers, guess what? That applies. It says fornicators, and you better believe that adultery is even a worse form of fornication. And it says to, to you know, remove that wicked person from among you and not have anything to do with that person. The person who gets caught committing sin and doing wrong almost always will say, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do it because they got caught. Amen. But that doesn't mean that they're truly repentant in their heart. Right. Now, when it comes to Donnie Romero, I actually spoke with him on the phone on Friday. I, don't, I didn't hear repentance. He said he was. But you know what? You can see through a lot of statements and, and the the, how genuine people are by, by some of the words that they use. When you start trying to throw all these examples, oh, but what about David in the Bible? What, you know, don't go telling me why I need to just all of a sudden just start like, like you're deserving of some type of, of forgiveness from me when you just get caught doing some stuff and wouldn't have, you know, I fell into this trap too when I first started hearing some of the information. I thought, wow, hey, at least he, had, he, he was noble enough to step down when there's a problem that's disqualifying him. And probably everyone had the same approach. But why? Because he was, uh, out of almost everybody, he was a, his, him, his family, are very close friends of mine. I've known him, I think, pretty well, very well. I've been there for him. He's been there for me. So this strikes a very personal chord for me. But you know what? I love God and Jesus more than I love man. And I will not, I will not take the friendship of a, of a, of a wicked person over, over my Lord any day of the week. I believe he's saved. But God has judgment for a reason and judgment needs to come. And I'm going to leave that. That's left up to God to judge. His own words are going to come back and haunt him. Guarantee you that if, if it doesn't, then the Bible's not true because God will judge him. And I believe God already has.